so good evening all welcome to another session of speaking aiders today we going to discuss about writing task so before we start with the uh, our session i would like to request you guys if you not at subscribed our youtube channel please subscribe our youtube channel it's speaking aiders it's on the screen and i believe there is a lot of useful contents there so please subscribe that channel let's move on so today as i just told you guys we doing a writing session and in this section what we planning is we going to slightly explain about how to write a body paragraph especially in a referral or a transfer letter how you can write it's a small technique easy technique let's see how we can do so let me explain malayalam ee section la nammal oru writing discussion aanu nammal cheyan povunnathu adhaayidu engane namakku body il paragraph body paragraphs engane first oru paragraph engane namakku vrutthiyayittu ezhudam ennalla oru cheriya oru discussion adine korchu cheriya onnu rendu tips um tharunna irikkum engane namakku ezhudan pattum engane namakku 1 2 3 4 lines connect cheyidu oru ഇപ്പോൾ ഒരു ഈസിക്ക് ഒരു കഥ വായിക്കുന്ന പോലെ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ അതിൻ്റെ ഒരു പ്രോപ്പർ ഓർഡർ ആയിട്ട് നമുക്ക് എങ്ങനെ ചെയ്യാൻ പറ്റും എന്ന് നമുക്ക് ജസ്റ്റ് ഒന്ന് നോക്കാം ഓക്കെ റെഡി ലെറ്റ്സ് ഗോ സോ ആസ് ഐ ജസ്റ്റ് എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ നൗ ഹൗ ടു റൈറ്റ് എ ബോഡി പാരഗ്രാഫ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ വി വിൽ ഡിസ്കസ് മെയിൻലി ഹൗ ടു റൈറ്റ് എ ബോഡി പാരഗ്രാഫ് ആൻഡ് എ ക്യൂക്ക് ലുക്ക് അറ്റ് അതർ ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് ഓഫ് റൈറ്റിംഗ് ടാസ്ക് വെൻ ഐ സേ അതർ ആസ്പെക്ട്സ് ഇറ്റ്സ് അബൌട്ട് ദ ഡേറ്റ് അഡ്രസ് and the greeting part the reline there are a lot of confusions for a lot of people so basically we just trying to help you how to make in a writing in a proper order how you can write it with some small small examples let's see how it goes so when it comes to writing for the basic knowledge first thing let me just admit few of them okay that's it i think that's it okay um basic knowledge writing nursing time allowed in total is 45 minutes in that 40 minute 45 minutes reading time is 5 minutes and writing time is 40 minutes so i will explain you how you can utilize your 5 minutes of reading and what you will do how you can plan in the 40 minutes of writing let's move on first thing what's the order of a letter how to write a letter what's the format so let's see so um you can write in different ways so i'm just explaining one way so the first way is the first thing is name and address second comes the date third comes the greeting line fourth the re line re line means regarding then the introduction after that body paragraphs concluding paragraph and the ending so it's basically and uh, one thing let me tell you that some of them are so used to writing uh, so comfortable in writing the date first it's also fine um what i did basically i was always writing the name and address first then comes the date then the greeting and the reline and if i'm correct uh, i have seen some official official oet videos so I have seen there they saying you can change the greeting and the uh, re line as per your convenience it can be in either way either the regarding line can can come first and the greeting can be later so for the malayalam people let's again uh, name and address adime eduga date eduga greeting line eduga regarding line eduga name and address um date um angotu angotu maari eduthan kolappunnilla greeting line um angotu angotu maari eduthan kolappunnilla pinne introduction und body paragraphs und concluding paragraphs und ending ending means you are sincerely and your position registered nurse emergency nurse head nurse in charge nurse so next thing 
Okay. Now, before that, um, how to utilize the reading time? So, in an exam hall, you will get the booklet, question booklet, and answer booklet. So, the reading five minutes. At any stage in the five minutes, you are not allowed to write or use a pencil in the five minutes time. Please keep in mind that. Adam, anju minute reading time tharanele erdano paadilla. Plan chiyam. You can plan in your mind. Manasile plan chiyam. So what you will do? Things to remember. Who you writing to? First thing. What is their job role? What you writing to her or him about? Or what is your role? Naale karigal. Four main things. Who you writing to means who you are writing the letter to. So maybe the name is the, for example, you can say you are writing a letter to Mr. Ringu Joni. So who you writing to is Ringu Joni. What is the job role? Who is he? So it can be a doctor, it can be a nurse, it can be a dietitian, it can be a physiotherapist, it can be anything. So that is the next thing. And you will find these two things all the way end of the question booklet. You will you will find on the writing task all the way back. So I will suggest you guys to when you start looking at the task, first look at the uh, bottom all the way last go all the way last to the writing task and have a look who you writing to what is the job role before you have it have a quick look at the task then what you writing to hear about that means what is your task in this one is that a referral letter or what do you want to mention that is it for ongoing treatment or management or some urgent assessment or some dietary advices or some mobility exercises or physio exercises it can be anything so it just make sure what is the task, what you are writing about, writing to her or him about. Then what is your role, who you are. So you will find on top of the task, all the way when you look at the writing task, you will find it is uh, you are a registered nurse working in this uh, ward, or you are an emergency department nurse. So you'll find that thing on the first, on all the way on the top of the task, writing task. So again for the Malayalam, who you writing to? What is their job role? What is their position? What are you writing to him or her about? What are you writing to ongoing care and management? What are you writing to details? What are you writing to urgent assessment? What is your role? What are you writing to your role? What is your role? What are you writing to your role? What is your job? Emergency nurse, head nurse, nurse in charge. Okay, let's move on to the first part, the address part. And the address part, how you can write the address. So for an example here, Mr. Ringu Joni, registered nurse, Eugene Marais Hospital, Pretoria, South Africa, 0084. This is how you write the address. So... For example, most of the letters will have only four or five lines, but some letters you will find that maybe seven or eight uh, lines will be there. For, uh, for example, if you can say like uh, Ringu Jonia registered, registered nurse, Eugene Marais Hospital, uh, Pretoria, um, then you can, there maybe they will say Les Marais, uh, Ilof Sadal, um, then comes uh, South Africa 0084. In that case, I'll suggest you to Try to short the address in four or five lines by writing after Eugene Marais Hospital, you write Pretoria. After that, you put a comma and write Les Marais. Then the next line you write uh, Elof Sadal, comma, South Africa 0084. That, will, that is better actually. Rather than writing mm -hmm. all the things like in a seven or eight lines, it's ideal to write in short or five, four or five lines. That will be better. I hope everybody understand that part. Coming to the date part. So the second thing is the date. So how you can write the date? You can write 13 December 2020. You can either put a comma or no need to put a comma. We all are so used to writing comma. So if you write comma, no problem. If you can have a look at the official OET letters, you won't find any commas there. They say it's not a problem. If you don't put a comma, do not put a comma, that's it. Uh, the other way you can write is 13.12.2020. There are a few other ways. I'm just showing you one or two ways. That's it. So for the Malayalam people, again, Padimuna uh, December, comma, and Dairati, comma, idam, lingle, idam, dirigan, corpoilla, comma, it you see the practice, idanil, a comma, idanote, or corpoilla. Okay. 
ഇനി അങ്ങനെ ഒരു ഡൗട്ട് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒഫീഷ്യൽ സാമ്പിളുകൾ നോക്കാം അവിടെ കോമേഴ്സ് ഒന്നും ഞാൻ കണ്ടിട്ടില്ല സോ ഐ ബിലീവ് അതിന്റെ ആവശ്യം ഇല്ലെന്ന് നെക്സ്റ്റ് തിങ് ഈസ് ദ ഗ്രീറ്റിംഗ് ഗ്രീറ്റിംഗ് പാർട്ടി ഈസ് ലൈക്ക് ആർക്ക് എന്താണ് ഡിയർ നഴ്സ് ഡിയർ ഡോക്ടർ ഡിയർ ന്യൂറോളജിസ്റ്റ് ഡിയർ ഡയറക്ടർ ഡിയർ മിസ്സിസ് ഐസെക് ഡിയർ ഡോക്ടർ ഐസെക് എന്നൊക്കെയാണ് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇഫ് ഇൻ എ ടാസ്ക് ദേ സേ റൈറ്റ് എ ലെറ്റർ ടു നഴ്സ് ഇൻ ചാർജ് സോ വി ഓൾ ആർ സോ യൂസ് ടു റൈറ്റിംഗ് ഡിയർ സർ ഓർ മാഡം but rather than writing sir or madam it's just better to write the position dear nurse in charge that's a better way to write or dear um, if it says um, em- uh, what do you say emergency doctor on duty so you can just write dear doctor that's better rather than writing um, the full thing or sir or madam or whatever <laughs> it's better so i hope that part is also clear then comes the regarding line so it's again re then you write mr ingu joni comma aged 45 years uh i have seen a lot of us writing 45 years so for the malayalam people i believe i think it's correct still but i was practicing this way aged 45 when you write 45 years it means when you look in our language malayalam 45 varshangal ennaanu varunathu ചിലപ്പോ കുറെ പേരൊക്കെ അത് തെറ്റാന്നൊക്കെ പഠിപ്പിക്കുന്നുണ്ടാവും പക്ഷെ എന്നെ എനിക്കതൊരു കൺവിൻസിംഗ് ആയിട്ട് തോന്നിയിട്ടില്ല അതിലും നല്ലത് ഏജ്ഡ് ഫോർട്ടി ഫൈവ് ആണ് എഗെയിൻ ഒ ഇ ടി ഒഫീഷ്യൽസ് സാമ്പിൾസ് ലെറ്റേഴ്സ് നോക്കിക്കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നിങ്ങൾക്ക് കാണാൻ പറ്റും അവിടെ അവർ യൂസ് ചെയ്യുന്നതെല്ലാം ഏജ്ഡ് ഫോർട്ടി ഫൈവ് എന്ന് തന്നെയാണ് ഫോർട്ടി ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് എന്ന് ഞാൻ എങ്ങും കണ്ടിട്ടില്ല സോ ഐ വിൽ സജസ്റ്റ് ഏജ്ഡ് ഫോർട്ടി ഫൈവ് ഇഫ് ദർ ഇസ് നോ ഏജ് യു റൈറ്റ് ഡി ഒ ബി ട്വന്റി വൺ ഡോട്ട് സീറോ എയ്റ്റ് ഡോട്ട് നയൻറ്റീൻ എയ്റ്റി സിക്സ് എന്നെഴുതാം another example i would like to tell you is that if there is age and date of birth is there i will rather prefer to write the date of birth than an age the reason i am saying is i will write the age in the introduction para why i will just explain you now so i hope that part is also clear going to the introduction introduction only two main things which will decide your letter purpose and diagnosis for example i am writing regarding mr joni comma or just leave it i am writing regarding mr joni um uh, who was diagnosed with uh, pneumonia full stop he requires ongoing care and management so the purpose is the the diagnosis is the symbol leave it and for an example another example so the purpose and diagnosis both part are the another example if in case let's imagine that um i am 33 year old i am having rheumatoid arthritis that's the diagnosis in the task i am a typist or a computer analysis or something let it be so i will believe rather writing the social part of that uh, uh, typist and everything if again depending upon the age and date is given sorry age and date of birth is given i will rather write i am writing regarding mr x comma a 33 year old typist who has been diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis this one will be ideal the reason i am saying is you will get a better clarity when you look at that letter you can easily connect a 33 year old typist typist nu parayumo he will have the habit of this uh, playing with the keyboards computer and everything so maybe that can be one of the reasons for getting arthritis to connect it and to get a better understanding i believe um, to write like that so one second i'm just admitting some of them okay that's it so i think that part is also clear it can be anything i'm writing regarding mr x a and 80 year old uh, and 80 year old adayade and ubhayikunnathu ആ ഏജ് എഴുതുമ്പോ എയ്റ്റി വന്നാൽ മാത്രമേ ആന ഉപയോഗിക്കേണ്ട ആവശ്യമുള്ളൂ എയ്റ്റി ടു എയ്റ്റി നയൻ നയൻറ്റി വന്നാൽ ഏ വരും ആൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ആൻ എയ്റ്റീൻ ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് എന്നൊക്കെ പറയുന്ന പോലെ അപ്പോ ആൻ എയ്റ്റി ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് റിട്ടയർഡ് എന്തെങ്കിലും ആവട്ടെ റിട്ടയർഡ് ഓർ സംബഡി എ മിലിറ്ററി ഓർ സംതിങ് 
വിത്ത് എന്തെങ്കിലും ഒരു കണ്ടീഷൻ അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു മൈൻ വർക്കർ വിത്ത് ബ്രോങ്കൈറ്റിസ് കുറച്ചും കൂടി കണക്ട് ചെയ്യാൻ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ബി ബെറ്റർ ഈസി ഓക്കെ ലെറ്റ്സ് മൂവ് ഓൺ So now here comes our official part, our today's main task, body part. So in the body paragraphs, ideally it must be three, it should be three paragraphs, not more than that. Um, not longer than six to seven lines each in a paragraph. Select only relevant data. When I say this, I hope everybody has seen the OET sample test paper. They are a bit long. So... in a line you can write 10 sentences sorry 10 words so when you write 10 words six or seven lines will be like 60 to 65 words if you count 10 words in one line six lines is like 60 or 70 that will be ideal more than that it won't look that nice so i'll suggest 60 to 70 words in a paragraph not more than six to seven lines each paragraph that's the thing three paragraph ideally present history past history surgical history or social history whatever it may be so let's have a look how to make a body paragraph in oet this is a simple example what i thought about this was the way i was writing the uh, oet when i when it comes to a transfer letter or a referral letter or any um, emergency case or something it this is very easy just imagine that how we work in our hospitals എങ്ങനെ നമ്മൾ ഹോസ്പിറ്റലിൽ ജോലി ചെയ്യുന്നത് ജസ്റ്റ് ഒന്ന് ചിന്തിച്ചാൽ മതി ഒരു രോഗി വന്നു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ ഫസ്റ്റ് നമ്മൾ അവരുടെ ഒരു പ്രസന്റിംഗ് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ചോദിക്കും അല്ലെ ഇപ്പൊ ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ പറയുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ ആശുപത്രിയിൽ വന്നു എനിക്ക് പനിയുണ്ട് ചുമയുണ്ട് തലവേദനയുണ്ട് ഓക്കെ ഞാൻ അത് കളക്ട് ചെയ്ത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് ഞാൻ എക്സാമിൻ ചെയ്യും നിങ്ങളെ ആ എക്സാമിൻ ചെയ്യുന്നത് സോറി ആ എക്സാമിൻ ചെയ്യുന്നു എക്സാമിനേഷൻ ആണ് അടുത്ത പാട്ട് ആ എക്സാമിൻ ചെയ്യുമ്പോൾ ചിലപ്പോൾ എനിക്ക് എന്റെ ടെമ്പറേച്ചർ ഹൈ ആയിരിക്കും എനിക്ക് ടെക്കിക്കാടി ഉണ്ടാവും അങ്ങനത്തെ കുറച്ച് കാര്യങ്ങൾ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കും അത് ചെയ്തതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് നിങ്ങള് നിങ്ങൾ എന്നെ ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിഗേഷൻ വിടും ചിലപ്പോൾ ഒരു ചെസ്റ്റ് എക്സറി ആവാം ഇല്ലെങ്കിൽ ഒരു സ്വാബ് ആവാം എന്റെ സിംറ്റംസിന് അതുമായിട്ട് ബന്ധപ്പെട്ട് ഇപ്പൊ ഒരു കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ സ്വാബ് ആയിക്കോട്ടെ ആ ചെസ്റ്റ് എക്സറി കിട്ടുന്ന സോറി ആ ചെസ്റ്റ് എക്സറിയും സ്വാബും ചെയ്തതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് റിപ്പോർട്ട് കിട്ടുന്നു എനിക്ക് നിമോണിയ ഉണ്ട് സ്വാബ് പോസിറ്റീവ് ആണ് there comes you diagnose my condition is called covid 19 then after that you manage or treat so you manage my condition with uh, according to the covid protocols you might be giving some uh, medications up to that according to that after that the current status ah uh, avada thana same ipo for in case if it is a surgery or something ipo for example oraala veenu kai odinju വന്ന് എക്സാമിൻ ചെയ്തപ്പോ പെയിനും ടെൻഡർനെസ്സും ഉണ്ട് ഇൻവെസ്റ്റിഗേഷൻ എക്സ്റേ ചെയ്തു കൺഫേം ചെയ്തു അതായത് ഇവിടെ ഇവിടെ ഫ്രാക്ചർ ഉണ്ട് എൽബോ ഫ്രാക്ചർ ഉണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ റേഡിയൽ ആളിന് അങ്ങനെ എന്തെങ്കിലും ഫ്രാക്ചർ ഉണ്ട് അതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് ഡയഗ്നോസ് കൺഫേം ചെയ്തു മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ഭാഗമായിട്ട് എമർജൻസി എന്നെ ഒരു ക്ലോസ് റിഡക്ഷൻ ഓപ്പൺ റിഡക്ഷൻ ഇന്റർണൽ ഫിക്സേഷൻ എടുത്തു മാനേജ്മെന്റ് മാനേജ്മെന്റ് ദെൻ യു പുട്ട് മീ ഓൺ സം മെഡിക്കേഷൻസ് ഫോർ എക്സാമ്പിൾ സം പെറ്റഡിൻ ഓ പാരസെറ്റാമോൾ ഫോർ ദ പെയിൻ ആൻഡ് ഹെഡ് ഡേക്ക് ആൻഡ് എവറി തിങ് current status coming to the current status uh, his condition is stabilized as evidenced by normal vital signs so whatever it, whatever it can be so again uh, presenting complaints presented with uh, uh, some fever chills or other thing so let's have a look quick look how it goes okay so presenting symptoms what's the first sentence it can be in a uh, paragraph body paragraph admitted with the word one sentence example mr ingu presented to the emergency department after hitting his left hand on a wall following an argument alle adayid um nan emergency department il vannu ende edate kai bithiyile wallile idichu following an argument aaru vakke ayittu oru vadukkundaki ende kai idichu or some signs and symptoms mr ingu presented to the emergency department with the complaints of um fever headache uh, chills sweating or anything or else you can say mr ingu presented to uh, presented to our hospital or presented to hospital with the signs and symptoms suggestive of uh, covid 19 adha idu adu engane ezhudha nu vichu njal chalpo chela letters le velli letters le ka kore signs and symptoms vannittundo 
അപ്പൊ അതൊക്കെ മൊത്തം ഒഴിവാക്കിയിട്ട് സിമ്പിൾ ആയിട്ട് എഴുതാവുന്ന ഒരു സാധനമാണ് മിസ്റ്റർ റിങ്കു പ്രസന്റ് ടു ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ വിത്ത് പ്രസന്റ് ടു ഹോസ്പിറ്റൽ വിത്ത് ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് സജസ്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ ആ ക്ലിനിക്കൽ ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് സജസ്റ്റീവ് ഓഫ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നിടത്ത് എല്ലാ സിംറ്റംസും കഴിഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞു അത്രേ ഉള്ളൂ അപ്പൊ അതാണ് പ്രസന്റിംഗ് കംപ്ലൈന്റ് നെക്സ്റ്റ് ഈസ് ദ എക്സാമിനേഷൻ ഓൺ അസസ്മെന്റ് ഹി ഹാഡ് പെയിൻ ആൻഡ് ടെൻഡർനെസ് ഓവർ ദ സെക്കൻഡ് ആൻഡ് തേർഡ് മെറ്റാ കാപ്പൽസ് on examination his vital signs were deranged on examination he has a low grade fever and tachycardia again repeating adayada vannu patient inna symptoms bithiyil idichena vagamayitte kai adu vayittu hospital il vannu assessment cheyidappo kai ki vedanayum tenderness undu evide second and third metacarpals allengil another scenario situation vital signs were deranged vital signs ellam uh, abnormal aanu on examination he has a low grade fever and tachycardia hope that's clear so that's the second part third thing investigation so after presenting complaint and uh, assessment next comes the investigation part and x ray revealed the third metacarpal fracture allengil subsequently he went through a series of evaluations like oncologic and geriatric spelling wrong ana g r geriatric t r i c or he underwent a ct scan and a biopsy or um, therefore let's imagine the covid case therefore x ray of the chest and a nasal swab was taken adana that's the investigation part it can be anything so that's the, where the it's like a uh, story you presenting complaints then comes the examination then comes the investigation after investigation diagnosis so you did a uh, x ray which confirmed meta meta uh, meta carpal fracture so which confirmed the diagnosis or which revealed a non displaced fracture allengil when it comes to covid uh, covid thing it again you say it um, which uh, the x ray report showed uh, showed uh, lobar pneumonia and the nasal uh, swab came out as positive which confirmed the diagnosis as covid as covid 19 so that's the diagnosis part then comes the treatment so after confirming the metacarpal fracture third therefore he underwent the surgery and a fiberglass cast was applied for immobilization adinde bhagamayittu or surgery ki poi karanam already maybe we will say in the intro that he underwent a um, or he he is recovering from a uh, close reduction and internal fixation and we have already said it so you don't have to repeat it again by saying so you say therefore he underwent the surgery and a fiberglass cast was applied for immobilization or you can say uh some other case with the admission with the pain or something he was managed with the iv morphine and paracetamol was given for his headache or he was managed with the intravenous morphine and paracetamol was given for his headaches so that's the treatment part so either it can be surgical or medical then comes the current status currently currently the his is missing actually currently his condition is stabilized ഈ ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് എല്ലാം ചെയ്തതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് ഹിസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് സ്റ്റെബിലൈസ് ആസ് എവിഡൻസ്ഡ് ബൈ ഹിസ് വൈറ്റൽ സൈൻസ് സോ നമ്മൾ കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ ഓർത്തു കഴിഞ്ഞാൽ നമ്മൾ ആദ്യമേ പറഞ്ഞ പേഷ്യന്റെ ഫീവർ ഉണ്ട് അല്ലെങ്കിൽ ചക്കിക്കാടി ഉണ്ട് പക്ഷെ നമ്മൾ ഈ മാനേജ്മെന്റ് എല്ലാം കൊടുത്തതിന്റെ ഭാഗമായിട്ട് കറന്റ്ലി ഇപ്പോ ഹിസ് കണ്ടീഷൻ ഈസ് സ്റ്റെബിലൈസ്ഡ് ആസ് എവിഡൻസ് ബൈ ഹിസ് വൈറ്റൽ സയൻസ് എവിഡൻസ് ബൈ ഹിസ് നോർമൽ വൈറ്റൽ സയൻസ് മിസ്സിംഗ് ആണ് നോർമൽ വൈറ്റൽ സയൻസ് ഓർ യു ക്യാൻ സേ ആഫ്റ്റർ സർജറി യു ക്യാൻ സേ കറന്റ്ലി ഹി ഈസ് മേക്കിംഗ് എ ഗുഡ് പ്രോഗ്രസ് as evidenced by his walking or whatever uh, it can be anything walking with a walker or anything so that's how you make a body paragraph i'll repeat it again um first thing what it can be first thing the presenting complaint the second thing um second thing the uh, examination or assessment third thing the investigation fourth thing the treatment fifth the diagno sorry fifth is the fourth investigation sorry let's repeat again presenting complaints examination investigation report and diagnosis management and current status let's move on 
So we got a basic idea. So how to make a paragraph now? Mr. Engu presented to the emergency department after hitting his left hand on a wall following an argument, presenting complaint. On assessment, he had pain and tenderness over the second and third metacarpals. An X-ray revealed the third metacarpal fracture. Therefore, he underwent the surgery and a fiberglass cast was applied for immobilization. His pain was managed with intravenous pethidine and paracetamol was given for his headache. Currently, his condition is stabilized as evidenced by his normal vital signs. This is a paragraph. Don't, when I say six to seven lines here, you can see only four plus seven lines. But OET sample paper, you have a lo lot more wider, so you can able to manage to write 10 words. So it will be six or seven lines. I hope that's clear. Or you, else you can say Mr. Ingo presented to emergency hospital with sweating uh, chills and fever. Uh, sweating chills and headache uh, on assessment he had a low, he has a low grade fever and tachycardia um, uh, therefore he underwent a chest x-ray and a nasal swab uh, uh, and his report showed uh, lobar pneumonia and uh, and his uh, swab result came out as positive which confirmed his uh, diagnosis uh, he was immediately transferred to an isolation i, I i'm not putting any connectors i'm just saying ne, why whatever and then so he was immediately moved to and he was managed accordingly currently his condition is stabilized as evidenced by his normal vital signs so that's it now the conclusion part you can say based on the above you are, we are you like in a different ways based on the above in light of the above or and either not the normally normally i do uh, your intervention or your prompt <coughs> intervention so your intervention means uh, I normally like this. Your intervention or your prompt inter intervention. If there is, let's say, an urgent case, so uh, there you don't have to write anything after writing an urgent assessment. You can simply write your intervention in Mr. X case would be greatly appreciated, or your prompt intervention in Mr. X case would be greatly appreciated. That will be a simple conclusion, if you want to. Then extra tips. Word count must be 182 to 200. When I say 16 to 20 lines, one line equal to 10 words, 16 lines equal to 60, 160 and 200 lines, maximum of 25 lines. That's what they pr prefer to say. That's what they recommend also. Another thing I discussed that add age or profession in intro if possible. Few tips. Then um, that's it. So that's the explanation for a uh, body paragraph, how to write it. I'll repeat it again, once again, sorry. So it's the presenting complaint, investigation, sorry, presenting complaint, assessment, investigation, report, diagnosis, treatment or management, lastly, current status. You can make a beautiful paragraph. You can easily write a beautiful paragraph. So that's the end of our discussion. Once again, I request you guys, please try to subscribe our YouTube channel, Speaking Aiders. You will find a lot of uh, speaking contents and other reading, uh, reading samples. So not samples, reading tips. You will find another video there. And I hope this section was useful. Um, let's move on to the Q&A section. We are remaining with the three minutes. So let's quickly go to the Q&A section. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Okay, anybody want to ask anything? All clear? Uh, sir, I have a doubt. Yes. Uh, regarding this uh, um, RE line, uh -huh. uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, that Mr. Dato, but that should be in the uh, down part or is it the same line? It can uh, be anything. Either you can write on the straight line after Mr. Re, re dot Mr. Ingujoni comma dob. It is fine, still fine. Or you can write uh, write down also dob. Anything is fine, not a problem. And the other doubt is in the date part. Date, you know, uh, you mentioned that uh, for example, 13 December comma 2020. So instead of the comma, we can write it 13 December 2020 or uh, uh, this uh, full stop in between. Which one no, is no. preferable? No need. When you write in full word December, uh, comma is preferably it's okay. But uh, like I said again, um, 
let let me repeat again you don't have when you look at the official samples they never put any comma in between and even after the greeting line dear sir or madam dear doctor they never put any commas so i don't think it's that mandatory thing but they still they don't mind if you put it it's okay if you don't put it that's also fine yes. is it correct 13 uh, is in the uh, words and is uh, sorry 13 in numbers and the number is uh, words then without comma 2020 we can write it right yes you can write it if you can have a look at the official uh, site of oet you will find a lot of example letters there actually and you will find that that things are there and uh, i heard uh, some more things that if uh, there is no name in the right hand to whom we are writing uh, because uh, to write a uh, what this uh, physiotherapist or some some other person without the name uh, in the conclusion but you are sincerely or you are faithfully what you if there is no name yours faithfully again uh, it's not me who decided you can go through the official site you will find five examples example letters so i think you have you can see there i won't mention the names there and it's against the rule so you can have a look at the official site you will find five examples of writing for nursing and it is there clearly mentioned yours faithfully yeah okay. uh, it's very helpful thank, thank you, you sir anybody uh, else we are remaining with the less than 1 minute anybody else Sir, can you uh, arrange one speak regarding like this class for the speaking also? We have a common WhatsApp group. Um, I think are you in there? I'm not sure. We have a WhatsApp group. We have a FB group. We have a Telegram group. So all the names are the same speaking headers. You can have a look. Oh, please, uh, how to contact me? <laughs> My number. You can. No, I'm uh, recently I joined this WhatsApp group. Uh, Okay, so we're doing December, daily free uh, sessions. Uh, we are doing daily free sessions. Also, we are doing. Uh, uh, we have regular classes also. If you are interested, you can join. But I take only few candidates. Ne, only ten and ten. That's it. So I'm already having seven.